Hey, Ray Del Vecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com, and today I want to go through what is my favorite program outside of Google Chrome. It's definitely one that I use the most, and that's Notepad++. So I want to go through a quick tutorial of what I love about it and how you can use it for pretty much everything from writing to code editing and also data formatting. So that's what we're going to start with here. I just got a couple of numbers that I copy and pasted from a spreadsheet. They're on a single line, but they're all tabbed out. So you're going to see how you can use the search and replace, which they have advanced features. One of them is the search mode. So you have normal normal mode which acts like regular search and replace but then you have extended and that gives you access to these characters which this is the new line character return tab and then you also have regular expressions which this is like the one thing with code that I just don't understand I've used it before just like copy and pasting but in this example we're going to go through the extended mode if we go over to replace we can find the tab character with the slash t I always forget if that's a backslash or forward slash I mix them up all the time and we can replace that with a new line and a lot of times the new line will be both a return a coverage return along with a new line so let's do that and let's replace all and see what happens and you can see that all of those numbers go to a new line so I use notepad plus plus all the time as the intermediary program when I'm copy and pasting data between maybe you know something I find online or in another program and I need to format it a certain way the next cool feature that I am embarrassed to admit I was looking up how to do this about a week ago and I just figured out while doing research for this video that you can search within a directory. I was trying to do it from the command line, didn't realize that Notepad++ had this, and I'll show you exactly what I was looking for. So for this example, I downloaded Yoast SEO and it should be within this folder. Yeah, here it is. So this is the Yoast SEO WordPress plugin and you can see there's like 10 folders here. There's tons of files. So I'm just gonna select this folder. I'm not gonna do a search and replace. I just wanna find this one function called add menu page add underscore menu underscore page and then you can also do this within all the subfolders we're definitely going to need to do that so let's find this it's going to go through all of them and show you all the hits and you can right click this and hit open all and it's going to open all the files that have that function within there and then if you double click on it it's going to take you right to that line so this is an awesome awesome feature and now that we're looking at this code you can see how notepad plus plus styles code for almost 80 languages i think they mention on their help page so it's incredibly useful when you're writing code html php css javascript and many many others but those are the ones that i use most frequently with web design and wordpress you now, the great thing about WordPress is everything is open source. So when you download these plugins, you can open up all these source files and see exactly how it works. So a few cool things that I like about it. Number one is that when you double click on a word like function, it's going to highlight that across the entire file. So you can see every instance of that word whenever you double click on it. So for code, that's super useful when you're looking for variables or functions like I just was doing right there. You can see where a function is declared and where it's used. And then you can also indent. So you can select an area of text, hit the tab button or shift tab, which goes backwards to indent or remove that indent. There is a way to add plugins, you know, kind of like WordPress, Notepad++ has plugins. One of them is this XML tools and they have this feature called Pretty Print. Let me bring up, let me exit out of this and I'm gonna bring up another example file that I have and it's just an HTML file. This was something that I put together like 10 years ago when I was just learning HTML. I still have it on my Dropbox. Let's say I highlight everything here and take all those tabs away. So there is a feature on this XML tools plugin. Let me just select everything. I'm not sure if it has to be selected, but it's called Pretty Print. So that will automatically put all those tabs in for the HTML. There's a similar one for JavaScript called JS Tool. Whatever you're using Notepad++ for, there may be plugins to do even more cool stuff than what's built into it by default. And the last couple of things that I want to mention here are ways that you can deal with projects. So they actually do have what's called a project panel. That's basically organizing a number of files any way that you want but there's a couple other simpler ways to do it. One of them is called folder as a workspace, which I believe you can get to from view here. And I already have the folder where this index.html file is set up here. So this is just a slider. And I can show you what this looks like if we bring that up in Google Chrome. 
So this is all it was. I was just figuring out basically how to create a slider with HTML and JavaScript back in the day. Nowadays, there's probably libraries that you can do this with. And with WordPress, there's plugins that you can do it with if it's not built into the theme already. And you can see the folder as a workspace just makes it easy to open up any of these files if you'd like to edit something. And the other way that you can organize a project is by saving the session. So that's really just going to save your open tabs. So you can do that by doing file, save session. This is going to be an NPP file. And I usually do it in the top level folder, the same folder that we assigned to the workspace over here. And I just usually call it session.npp. So we'll save that. And then let me exit out of all these and see what happens when we open up that session file. And you can see that opened those four files. It doesn't open that folder as a workspace panel. This is just linking to the files that you have open. If you're manually uploading these files over to your web server, I use FileZilla to do that. You can exclude this .npp file so it doesn't show up and you don't transfer that over since it serves no purpose on a web server. So those are some of the basics with Notepad++. It's solved so many of my problems over the years. Notepad++ is so powerful and in a way, kind of like Photoshop, which I just created a video for a week or two ago, I'm probably using like 5% or less of what it's capable of. If you ever use just plain old Notepad, I highly recommend you upgrade to Notepad++. Unfortunately, there is not a version for Mac. There is a couple other programs that are similar. One of them was BB Edit, which I think now they give you the free option for like 30 days and then you have to either upgrade or you get locked out to some of the features. Another one which I just heard about recently is called Cot Editor, C-O-T. So if you're on a Mac, check those two out if you'd like something that works in a similar fashion to Notepad++. If you are here because you're learning code and using Notepad++ as a code editor, consider taking your skills with web design and freelancing, find some local business businesses or people around you that need a website. So go to my homepage. You can download a free giveaway, 15 tools to start your web design business. I got a couple other things on there to help you out if you're at a different stage or you want to learn something else, such as this free WordPress 101 training. That'll give you a complete background on how WordPress works and how to navigate through the admin area. I'm a code guy. I love code, but WordPress is just a lot better when it comes to managing a website that has a lot of pages and a lot of content like blog posts or that kind of thing. Last but not least, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and it taught you something. If you use a different code editor, I'd like to hear what you're using. Leave it in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for future WordPress and web design freelancing videos. I really appreciate you making it this far and I'll link up a couple other videos here if you want to keep on learning.